After creating these three videos where I described in great detail how to make a press 6 to win build, I came to realization that from a pure efficiency standpoint, you have roughly two options in this game. If you want the best DPS, you take two curved swords, collect some bleed and consecutive attacks boost talismans and jump in front of the boss for a second or two. Or if you want to tank all the damage while wielding an arsenal of the size of a small aircraft carrier, you level up faith and strength. Don't forget to summon a spirit to make the gameplay itself. And not long ago, in the comments, I discovered that apparently people enjoy playing the game themselves, and in addition to pressing one button, they find it interesting to dodge boss attacks and try different playstyles. However, today I decided to try out an Elden Ring starting advice from the comments on one of my recent videos. Make a full build out of this and see how great swords feel after buffs in the latest patches. Since the foundation of our build is great swords, I first wanted to create a character that suits our weapons, especially since the Vagabond armor is very similar to the Bear School gear from Witcher 3. As usual, we easily deal with the local roach, because, as you know, how you start the playthrough, so you spend it. From the beginning run to Gate from Ruins, where we pick up the map shard, the Lord Sworn's Great Sword, as it's the most readily available to handed sword. Also grab the Whetstone Knife, so that we can grant our weapons Ashes of War without Blacksmith. Take the Torrent, and after a small running, pick up Crystal Tear that buffs our strength stat. Next to it in the Warmaster Shack by Impelling Trust, from Night Bernal. Another Ash of War we need can be obtained from the nearby Horseman. Golden Wow, it's a buff that can be used by carrying a dagger with it in our inventory. You simply switch to it, buff yourself, and switch back to your main weapon. This way we get the damage boost and negotiation without having to level up fate. Again. Next we head to the Fort Height. Defeat the knight here, obtaining the bloody ash of war, and of course take a part of the Dectus medallion. Obtain the second part of the medallion through the standard path via third church of Marika. There also pick up a flask of wonders physic. Portal in the bushes, boss with self-destructive tendencies, farming balls sight of grace. Finally, Fort Faroth. Rush in, loot the medallion, jump into the hall, and also loot the Radagon Source Heal. Alright, it's time to upgrade our weapons. In Liurnia of the Lakes, run to the portal in Lyska Ruins, and reach the entrance of the Academy. Descend on the stone, and now we are in Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, where we take the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 1 from the local boss, by spamming our Impelling Trust. To obtain the second ball bearing from this cave, we take a short path to the Dectus lift, and already in Altus Plateau, run past the capital's mobs without fighting them, collect some golden seeds, and here it is, sealed tunnel we need. Near the entrance, there will be a chest with the ball bearing. Buying all tiers of smithing stones from 1 to 4 in a quantity of 12 each will cost 25,200 runes, plus the upgrade of the sword itself will cost around 13,500. And if we consider that it would be desirable to us to have two swords, multiply that sum by two. Bastard sword you can buy from this merchant, by the way. <clears throat> Where can we get such a large number of runes to cover our expenses? A dragon at Fort Faroth and Knight Cavalry Abuse. For a dragon, you have Bloody Slash, which provides the blood affinity on any weapon you want. And for cavalry, you know, self destruction. On this playthrough, he threw himself off the bridge while I was just running to the Fort for all. Anyway, we now have two great swords plus 12. If you have any leftover runes, spend them on Vigor, Endurance, Strength and Arcane. I also recommend taking a walk through the sealed tunnel, where we picked up the second bell bearing. If you run around here, you can collect five smithing stone fives <laughs> uh, from the ground, and by destroying the statue with help of Abductor's version, you'll find three smithing stone six. And if you want to casually play the game without min-maxing and farming, use this smithing stone on your swords, purchase the Lost Ashes of War from the merchant, and duplicate Bloody Slash with it, giving blood affinity to both of your swords. This is the easiest way to have bleed in your weapons before Black Wet Blade and Nocron. That's how our stats and talisman set look by the end of the game. I hope this early game power boost guide was useful to you. Enjoy your gameplay and have a good day. But if you want to really polish this build and min-max a little bit, I suggest holding off on spending Lost Ashes of War and 5 plus tier smithing stones on these swords. First of all, I know you'll anyway complete Warrior's quest to farm this chicken, so deal with Margit.
after that, I recommend to loot Claw Talisman. You can also grab Raptor Feathers and replace our dagger with Commander Standard. Complete the war quest and in Mogwin Palace, loot blood tax from Scarab. Now we don't need to spend our precious lost ashes on duplicating Bloody Slash to have bleed affinity on both swords. By the way, you can also obtain the white mask from this phantom. Now the weapons. In order to acquire mathematically best non unique great swords in the game, you need to head to the capital. To do this, take care of the second Sherbearer boss. And finally, once we have the opportunity to visit Landall, the first thing we need to do is to farm this Leonin Misbegottens. Run from the Avenue Balcony Site of Grace, kill these two small Misbegottens. Then teleport back to the Grace and repeat until you get two copies. The drop rate of the Iron Grad Sword is around 4% at 100 discovery, but since we've leveled up our arcane stat, you most likely have more than that. However, I still recommend using Silver Full Foot to farm faster. In the upper right corner, you'll see a guide on how to craft an infinite amount of those. Well, now our Witcher have two Iron Swords, both for humans, I guess. You can spend your accumulated Smithing Stones 5s and 6s on these swords without a second thought. If you want even more damage, you can use the remaining full foods to farm those miners in sealed tunnel. Drop chance for a tier 5 stone from them is 8%. But I would advise don't spend time on tedious farming and simply buying the necessary stones after you loot third bell bearing in on the tops of giants. By the way, I recommend replacing your Ash of War on both swords on Sipuku when you reach the mountain tops. If you killed Rodan before all of that and you really want to min max your damage before facing Margit, you can take the Black Wet Blade in Nokron and grant blood affinity to your weapons with a non blood Ash of War, a Royal Knight's Resolve, for example. About crystal tears. Get them by defeating this putrid avatar. It wouldn't also hurt to obtain Lord of Blood Exaltation in Landal Catacombs, video with a fast path to it in the upper right corner. Additionally, you can collect a couple of Smithing Stones 7 scattered along the way. Her tree's favor can be found in the same Landal undergrounds. Alternatively, you can avoid wandering through this shitty labyrinth and simply loot the most powerful version of favor closer to the end of the game here. Dragon Crest Grad Shield can be found in the location before Millennia. Best armor for legs and arm slots is obtained through the Patches quest in Volcano Manor. You see the final version of the build on the screens. One of its advantages is that our stats essentially allow us to use any power-based weapon, whether it's the Giant Crusher with Relate's Crosser or two Beastman's Curved Swords. You can also replace the Talismans and Crystal Tears with the ones you prefer. I think it's time to see how our build performs against bosses.
If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and feel free to share your own build ideas that I can test in future videos. See you in the next one.